friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawns, Life is Good, Fantastic Friends, and On the Beach. I've stamped my images on Nina Solar White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with my Sandcastle, and for that I'm using E51, E53, and E55. So I'm going to lay in some deep shadow, especially on that back turret with that E55. And then I'll also add a little bit on the front. And I'm going to fill in the little windows as well. And then for the top edges of each of those little um, places that have like the little teeth, I'm just going to add some shading on the right hand side of that just to keep it consistent. I'm also going to add a little bit of shadow any place that there is another part of the castle that is overlapping it and also a little bit to the turret at the top. Then I will bring in the E53 and begin to blend that out. I had accidentally grabbed the E51 at first, um, but I'm just going to pull that E55 out a bit, kind of soften up the edge of it and get things nice and smooth. And I will just continue to do that until I have blended out all of that darkest shade. And then I will bring in the E51 and I'm going to fill in any remaining white space. Now the E51 is quite a bit different than the E53. So I am going to have to work to create that blend, just making sure to scrub uh, over the edge of that E53, often in little circular motions and just kind of break up that pigment. And then I'm gonna let that dry for a bit. And in the meantime, I'm going to color in the sand in the bucket. Then I'm going to bring in the E50 and I'm going to use the E50 and E51 to color in the hermit crab's shell. So I added a little light shadow on the right hand side with the E51 and blended that out with the E50. And now that my sand has dried, I'm going to go back in and add some dot detail with that E55. If you did this when the ink was still wet, it would kind of just disperse and really lighten up. So if you want it to be more of a prominent detail like I do in this case, you want to wait until that image is fully dry. So I'm just adding a few little dots here and there, mostly in the deeply shadowed areas, but also a few outside of that space. I'm also going to use the E53 for a few of those dots. And uh, once I finish with the sand castle, I will do the same thing in the sand bucket because I want those to look, you know, the same since they're from the same beach. And now that my hermit crab shell has dried, I'm also going to go back in and add some different spots just to create that look of the conch shell. They often have different little brown spots here and there. So I'm using the E55 first and then just going on the edge of those with a little bit of the E53 to kind of um, just soften it into the lighter space and just give him a bit more personality. For his body, I'm going to use R24, R29, and R39. So that R39 is going to give me that nice, dark, rich, shadowed area. And then the R29 is so bright and pretty. It is the most gorgeous shade of red. And then the R24, you can see it's even called prawn. It's gonna add a bit of a salmony red to it, which is going to really make him look like a shellfish. So once I have him all colored in, I'm going to do a few of my accessory images as well. I'll do the little flag that is going to go on top of the sand castle. I'm also going to color in two sections of my beach ball. So I will start by putting a shadow on the top and bottom edge of each of those curved little sections. So I'm laying in that R39 first, and then I'll use the R29 on both edges, pulling towards that center, and leave a nice wide highlight area for that R24. That's gonna help it look nice and round. 
And then I also am going to add that um, same combo to the cap of the sunscreen. The next combo I'm using is BG02, BG05, and BG07. And again, I'm going to color two more sections of that beach ball in exactly the same way, just putting that darkest shade on the top and bottom and blending toward the center so I get that nice highlight. Um, on the top section, there was only room to blend from the center out. I didn't add another dark shadow because there wasn't enough space there. And then I'm also going to do the bottle of sunscreen in this turquoise blue color. So I just added a little bit of shading here and there. It was kind of hard to do because of the label, but just enough to give it a little bit of a sheen in the center. And then I'm moving on to my yellows, which is Y11, Y13, and Y15. I used the Y15 to color in the sun on the sunscreen. And then I'm also using these three shades to do the handle of the shovel. And I'm going to finish off my beach ball in yellow as well. And I'm making sure to keep all of that shine consistent in the center so it really looks nice and smooth. I'm going to add in the BG10 to add a little shading to the label on the sunscreen and the handle of the pail, the center of the beach ball, and also the tiny shell on the left. And then for my green combo, I'm using YG13, YG17, and G07. And I'm going to color in the sand pail with those shades. So I started with the G07 laying in that shadow. And then I'm blending out with the YG17. Now I just grabbed this combo as a whim. I had never used the G07 with the YG17 before. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't, again, they were a little bit too similar, so I probably would take either a little bit of a darker green for the shadow or um, a little bit of a lighter green instead of the YG17. But just to help blend that out and get it nice and smooth, I just did a double layer and really increased the dark areas so that it um, just looked more consistent with the rest of the images. For the sand dollar, I'm using W00, W1, W3, and W5. I laid in a tiny bit of shadow with that W3 and then blended out with the W1 and the W00 and let that fade into the white. And then for the inner portions, I'm using that W5 and blending out with the W3. For the remaining conch shell, I decided that I would color it pretty much the same as I did the one that the hermit crab decided to make his home. So I just used that E51 and E50 for the lighter areas. And then I went in and added some more spots with that E55. And then just colored over the very edge of that with the E53 to kind of just incorporate it all together. And then I took a black Sakura Jelly Roll pen and went over the eyes of my Hermit Crab and trimmed these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I'm going to take a long piece of post-it tape and tear off one edge so I get a rough texture there. And then I'm going to tape that down to a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock about one third of the way down the panel. Now, I did realize that I had put that down upside down. I actually wanted the rough edge on the bottom side. So I'm going to just reposition that. And then I am using my mini media mat to keep all of my ink blending off of my work surface. I'm starting with some Antique Linen Distress Oxide ink and I'm going to cover the entire bottom of the panel with that. And then I'm going to bring in some gathered twigs and I'm going to start at that torn edge because the sand would be wet where the water was lapping the shore. And then I'm going to um, blend the transition area with that Antique Linen again. Then I'm going to smoosh a little bit of those inks on my work surface and water them down with my Distress Sprayer. 
and I will grab a paintbrush and do some splatter detail and that is really going to help it look like it has that sandy texture. It's going to match the dots that I did on the sand castle and the sand in the sand pail. So I'm going to flick that all over and I just covered the top half with a piece of scrap paper and then I will peel off that tape and work on the top half. I did wait till that was mostly dry um, so that I could you know hold on to that without making a mess and then I'm going to blend some tumbled glass on the top portion and I'm bringing that down almost all the way to the sandy edge. I'm going to leave a little bit of a white halo to create the look of the waves crashing on the shore. Then I'll bring on some peacock feathers close there so that it looks like the sea is fading into the sky and I'm blending that out with my tumbled glass once again. Then I will set this panel aside to dry and once it has I will pop it into my misty. I did trim it down with the largest of the Lawn Fawn small stitched rectangle stackables. And I'm stamping my sentiment with VersaFine Onyx Black ink because it just really stands out on that Distress Oxide. Some other inks kind of fade into the Oxide inks, but this one kind of stays on top. I'm also going to pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using a piece of Mermaid cardstock from Lawn Fawn and stamping in Peacock ink. And this time my images and sentiment are from Smooth Sailing. So I stamp that down twice to get a good impression. And now I'm ready to assemble my card. I trimmed down a piece of really rainbow 6x6 pattern paper with the largest of the large stitch rectangle stackables this time. And I'm going to glue that to my card front using the glue tube. So it's going to fit over the entire surface of that card base. I've also added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel. So I'll peel off those release papers and line that up in the center and press that down into place. I'll add my images starting with the sand castle. That's kind of the focal image of the scene. So I'm going to put that right in the center, just overlapping a little bit of that uh, wave and sea area. And then I'll add the little red flag to the top and my hermit crab over on the right hand side there. So that will be his little home. And uh, I'm imagining that a family had been at the beach and they've kind of abandoned their toys and things. Maybe they've gone into the water for a swim and the hermit crab has kind of like taken over their little play area and the sand castle that they built. So he just thought that would be the perfect little home for him. Wasn't that nice of them to <laughs> create that for him? So there are all their little supplies and a few shells to kind of just fill in the scene there. So I'll just add this last little shell, just looking for the perfect placement for it. And once I'm sure, I will just glue that down. I decided that the sky looked a little empty over on the right hand side underneath the sentiment. So I stamped one more of those seagull silhouettes. And I also decided that the card just needed one more pop of green to pull in that sand pail. So I used the YG-17 and YG-13 to color in the top of the beach ball. And that is going to complete my card for today. There's another peek at the inside. I hope you guys enjoyed my little beachy scene with my hermit crab taking over the sand castle for his new home. I think he's so cute. I just love that image. If you did enjoy, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. I post new videos every Monday and Friday. And if you can't wait that long, here are two extra videos I thought might also interest you. You can click on either one of those to check them out. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.